Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to bring you another book haul. Last time I did this, I'm pretty sure I said I was done until my birthday in the summer and well, I'm back here again not so far along and I gotta say I had just have gotten so many review copies as well as some incredible gifts that came in after I filmed my Christmas book haul. So thank you all for that. If you're interested in just certain genres like horror, I do have timestamps down below, but I got tons of books to talk about and I'm really excited to share them all with you. So let's get started. First, let's talk about books that I've received as gifts, and the first one is Liminal Zone by Junji Ito, which is a book that was translated and put out last year in English, and I absolutely loved it, so I put it on my wish list because I really want to own all of my favorite Junji Ito books, and this is one of the few that I have not yet purchased out of my favorites, and so I really appreciate that. I know that Junji Ito manga are not cheap, and so I was delighted when I received it as a gift from subscriber Lincoln. I still haven't found out exactly which account you you are so if you want to identify yourselves in the comments I can thank you properly but I really appreciate this this is a beautiful book I love the artwork the cover of course is gorgeous and then you also have on the back the picture of the Virgin Mary and it all ties in to my favorite story within the collection which involves a Catholic boarding school and things go horribly wrong if you don't know the artwork is gorgeous I'm kind of nervous to show this on camera I know that YouTube gets really finicky about showing manga and artwork online but yeah this is gorgeous Gorgeous, and I'm really excited to have my own copy and it's definitely going to be part of my collection. I do have a whole video talking about my favorite Junji Ito, but that was filmed before I read Liminal Zone. So if you want to hear more about that, I'll try to remember to link it in the cards, but we'll see. I have a bad memory when it comes to editing. Next, I want to talk about A Child Among Strangers. I actually don't know how to say this author's last name, but this is a book that I received from a subscriber who contacted me. He had read this book and loved it and wanted to share it with me online so I would have a chance to read and review it for you all. And well, I believe I've already talked about this book by the time you're watching this book haul, we'll see. But essentially, I love this one and I'm so grateful that I got a chance to receive a copy of it uh, because this is one where I actually was in touch with the publicist, but for reasons the publisher was not able to send me a copy. And so it was kind of the book that got away last year. It's a 2022 release that I thought would be a favorite, but obviously I didn't read it in time. And yeah, I believe I've just reviewed this, so I'm going to keep it really short and sweet, but thank you so much. It was so generous of you to send this book to me especially in hardcover and all that. I know it's not the cheapest thing to send things to Canada, but it is a great way to get something onto my short-term TBR and you were right, it's a fantastic book, so thank you again. Next, I wanna talk about books that I received from my friend Whitney. She has a YouTube channel that she talks about books, and that is The Sauce of Storycraft, which I'll have linked down below. I know that's not the reason she sent the books, but I always will take every opportunity to shout out her channel until it is as large as mine. If you love science fiction as much as I do, I definitely recommend checking her out. But yeah, she was so generous to send me books, and she knows my taste super well, and so everything she picked out was amazing. Amazing. And so the first one she sent me is Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. And if you don't know, Neil Stevenson is easily becoming one of my all-time favorite authors. This might have been the first book I read by him, and I've been dying to reread it again. I happen to know that she wants to read this one, so I'm hoping it's going to end up on our shared summer TBR. But this one, if you don't know, is set in a future where there is a cataclysmic event that causes Earth to be unlivable in the short term, and so we have to figure out a way to get off of Earth and to have humanity survive in whatever means possible. And so this is a very long story that starts out with the short-term crisis and then follows what happens afterwards and the story goes from there. And I loved it a lot, but I didn't really know what I was getting myself into the first time I read Neil Stevenson because he loves an info drum, he loves long books, and he doesn't always land his endings. So I'm excited to reread this one again and see how I feel about it the second time around. I loved it a lot the first time. And again, that was before I became a super fan of this author. So I have a feeling I'm gonna love it even more when I get back to reading it. It's definitely a long one, but I know I'm gonna fly through it, so I cannot wait for that. Thank you so much, Whitney. Next up is The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. I love this author's other series, their fantasy, The Mirror Empire, and so I'm very excited to get to a science fiction thriller by them. This is a piece of military science fiction, and I think I know pieces of the plot, but I'm not sure if that's spoilery, so I'm gonna leave it there. But I know that this is Whitney's one of her favorite books, not the favorite, but I know it's among her favorites that she read, I believe, last year. And so she thought that I would love it as well since we share a lot of tastes in the same kinds of sci-fi. And again, I already know I love Cameron Hurley's work, so I'm eager to get to this one. So again, thank you for this one. You'll definitely see this one probably on my summer TBR if I don't get to it sooner than that. 
Next up, we have Embassy Town by Chana Mievel. This one I'm going to be reading in the shorter term, so you'll see a review coming soon enough. And this is a story that involves a alien first contact or alien contact, and I believe involves themes surrounding linguistics and just all of the things that China Mieville does so well. If you haven't followed my channel before, you may not know, but I love Perdita Street Station, which I read last year, and I'm very eager to continue on with more of his work. And so this is one that Whitney has not yet read, so we're planning on doing it as a future buddy read. And again, I'm just so excited for this one. I know I love his weird fantasy, and so I definitely want to see what he can do with science fiction, but I have a feeling I'm going to love this one, and I can't wait to get to it. So this will be very soon, and I'll keep you posted. And finally, from Whitney, we have The Trouble with Lycan by John Wyndham. And this is a very short novel slash novella that she read and loved, and and knew I was gonna love as well. I have not read this yet, but I pretty much know this is gonna be a favorite. I've read John Wyndham before and I've loved his previous work. I hadn't even heard of this one, but she was talking about it while she was reading it. And this story involves these biochemists that find this rare lichen and it has some properties that allows them to slow down aging. And I understand that this story plays with the idea of women in the workforce and women having careers. And I really just love books that challenge traditional roles of women in societies that are often shelved as mothers and really are not seen as full people and are asked to put down or put aside their careers. I just love books that deal with any of those topics and I know that there's some of that being addressed in here. So anyway, from what Whitney describes, I think I'm going to absolutely love this book. I basically want to put it on my favorites list now, but obviously I need to read it first. And also, I'm not a cover person, but is this not the cutest cover ever? I've never seen such an adorable cover for a John Wyndham book and so I'm very excited to read this one. I would love to read everything that John Wyndham has done at this point and so yeah, very excited. I will keep you posted, hopefully with a gushing review. And next I have a few horror and thriller review copies to talk about. The first one is Gothic by the same author who wrote A Child Among Strangers. I really need to say this name. Is it Philip Frack? Cassie? Am I saying that right? Someone else help me out with the pronunciation in the comments. You guys always deliver because I'm terrible at author's names. Anyway, this story is about a man who is on his 59th birthday. He's a famous but struggling horror writer and he receives this antique desk from his girlfriend with the hopes of rekindling the creative juices and I assume that things go terribly wrong. I love meta horror books that involves an author who is a horror author within the story and just the layers that that creates. So I have a idea I'm gonna love this one based off of how much I loved his other work and this is a new release I received a copy from the publisher slash publicist and so thank you so much and I'm definitely gonna prioritize reading this one very quickly because honestly I'm dying to read it after I enjoyed his first book that I read by him so much so review to come very soon Next up is Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca and this is by an author that I really should have read more by at this point. He's someone who kind of intimidates me because he's known for writing really messed up and disturbing things which you should argue is right up my alley. But there's something about his work that just intimidates me so I've been putting them off but I'd like to check out some of his work so I was very excited. I believe this came from Clash and this probably isn't the final cover and said this is an arc and early release but I understand that this is a story about evil waiting in an unsuspected small town, there are unexplained disappearances, and then things start to happen. This certainly sounds like the kind of story that deals with a lot of traditional tropes, but I happen to know again that this author tends to really subvert expectations. He tends to write really crazy stuff and usually puts a queer spin on things, so I am eager to see what he's going to do in this one. And this one again will be out a little bit later, it looks like in June, so expect a review around then. Stay tuned. Next up we have We Don't Swim Here by Vincent Tirado, and this is a young adult horror book and I don't read a lot of YA but every once in a while I hear about one that sounds right up my alley. I don't know much about the story itself. I'm looking at the back cover and it follows a group of teenagers. Their stories begin to intersect. They live in rural hill woods and I don't know too much about the plot from this back cover but this book is compared to those of you that love Lamar Giles or Tiffany D. Jackson and I've really enjoyed some of their previous work so I'm hopeful for this one. I think I've read this author before but I may not be certain of that um, but yeah yeah, definitely eager for this one. I love when there is YA horror that has an intersection with own voices stories and this sounds like a black authentic experience that is going to hit on a lot of themes and creepiness surrounding racism in America. So it's going to be very topical which tends to be my favorite kind of horror. So stay tuned for this. I love when there's social commentary within my creepy stories. 
Next, let's talk science fiction review copies. And there is an author that I just discovered is Canadian and writes science fiction and is very prolific. And I realized that I'd never read anything by them. And so of course I decided that I had to change that. I reached out to their publicist and they so kindly sent me a couple books to try out. And I definitely hope that I found a new author here. So I haven't read these books yet, but I will very soon. The first one I wanna talk about is Quantum Knight. And this is about an experimental psychologist who has discovered or developed developed a flawless technique that allows him to identify previously undetected sociopaths lurking everywhere in society. And then something goes horribly wrong and it ends up uncovering that he himself has memories from in the past where he himself possibly committed terrible violent acts. And so this is one that appeals to me because I do love a good sci-fi thriller, but I also think that's going to appeal to me on the fact that I love serial killers and dark and violent books. So I'm hoping it's going to have some good psychological aspects to it. I'm hoping it's going to compare to stories like Minority Report and all of that. And it just sounds like a really fun ride. And from the same author, I was very excited to receive uh, all three books in the WW trilogy. The first one is Wake. The second one is Watch. And then the third and final book is Wonder. So I'm gonna hold up the first one here. And my understanding is that this is an adult science fiction series that has some YA crossover appeal. So I've seen it shelved in both sections. Normally I typically only read adult literature, but this one sounded so good that I had to check it out. This story involves a blind teenager who has the opportunity to try out some experimental surgery and possibly get her sight back. But by doing so, I believe that she gets some other abilities and the story goes from there. I've just heard incredible things about this one. I've heard it has like a really smart, snarky teenager at the center of the story. And I always love stories with disability representation. It is something I seek out because I do want to experience other people's lives or get a better empathy and understanding and appreciation for what other people go through. And yeah, I've heard great things about this one. I've sampled the beginning of it and I'm really liking it. So hopefully I'll be having a review out for this very soon. Next, let's talk about The Outside by Ada Hoffman, as well as The Fallen and finally The Infinite, which came out this year. I've really recently gushed about this trilogy. I loved it so much. I received these books for review from Angry Robot Books and I then proceeded to do a giveaway thanks to them. And I really love this. So if you somehow miss those videos, this is the Lovecraftian science fiction story that follows a young brilliant engineer who creates this drive and something goes horribly wrong at the beginning. It's set in a world where there are AIs that serve as gods over humanity. And there's also a main character with AS a representation and I love basically everything about this book and this series it's weird it's strange it's out of the box and I do appreciate the representatives from Angry Robot Books allowed me to get a copy of The Outside because I it has been years since I read that one I'm not actually sure how I read it the first time and I gotta be honest that I really need to refresh myself how the story started and since so much of my life has changed between reading it the first time and coming back around it went from being a book that I appreciated to one that I absolutely loved and I really do recommend reading the books back to back to back because you really get to see the full picture of the story and they're just so bingeable. So highly recommend, start at the beginning, read your way through, and I hope you love them as much as I do. Next up, we have Neom by Lavi uh, Tidhar, if I'm saying that right. And this is a book I'm eager to read because it's set in the same world as Central Station, which is a science fiction book I've been dying to read. And somehow I'm reading this book first, but I do believe you can read them out of order because they are more companion novels. I've wanted to try this author for quite a while and just see what they can do. I feel like they kind of write the sort of science fiction that I'm looking for. There's definitely a certain slice or a style that tends to really appeal to me and I've always thought that this author would be right up my alley. So we will find out very soon. Another book that's already out is The Unbalancing by R.B. Lemberg. And this is a romance science fiction fantasy story that isn't always my thing when it comes to romance, but this one appealed to me because it has rep for different aspects of queerness as well as neurodiversity, which is a big buzzword these days for me. And so I'm curious to see this one. I think it's very enchanting and lyrical and beautiful. And again, when it comes to science fiction, I'm looking for something different. I feel like so many books follow the same tropes over and over again. So when something sounds different, I immediately want to read it. And again, this one I believe is already out. So I will prioritize getting a review out very soon. Then we have Hospital by Han Song. And this is a book I've heard amazing things about. I believe it's more science fiction, though it might have elements of horror. Essentially, it's a dystopian set in a near future. And the story I believe is set in a hospital or specifically following the hospital system of this near future and it's absolutely horrible and of course I think this 
this is meant to be a criticism on our current healthcare systems and the problems within them. It sounds super topical. It's a translated book. I would love to read more translated books this year. And yeah, I have high hopes for this one. It sounds super strange and dark and all the things that I love. Next is The Archive Undying by Emma Mako Candon. And this is a story that is set in a future where there are robotic gods. And I understand that it is an Asian inspired science fiction story involving mechs. And I happen to love mech anime, specifically Gundam Seed, which don't come at me. I know it's not considered the best one, but it's what got me into the genre. And so I would love to read that in book form. I've read a few mech fictions in the past, but they've never quite hit the mark. So I'm really hoping that this will be the five star book that I'm looking for. And as always, stay tuned with a review because this one is coming out in June. So I gotta wait a little bit before I read it. And also we have House of Gold by this author here. I don't wanna mispronounce their name. And this one, I'll be honest, I don't know tons about. I'm always looking again for own voices, stories that are gonna bring diversity to the science fiction genre. I know that we follow a group of individuals, four people on this distant planet, and they will face the ultimate test of loyalty, friendship, and duty in the rising tide of war. This is one where it has a really complex synopsis, and I don't really have the summary until I actually read the book. But again, this one is coming out in April, so I'll be reading it soon. The cover is beautiful, and I'm hoping I'll love the contents just as much. Next, we have a fantasy review copy, starting with The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson. I believe I already have a review out, so I've already gushed about this, but this is the 10th anniversary edition, and I really enjoyed it. This is a story that I do believe you can start with, in my opinion, even if you haven't read Elantris, which is technically the book that it's tied into, but it very much works as a standalone, and I really enjoyed it. I was very appreciative to receive a review copy of this, knowing what a big name Brandon Sanderson is. I don't feel like these copies just get flown around everywhere. So highly recommend it if you are a fan of his work or are not. I do think this is a great place to get started. Next up, we have The Lies of the Unjungo, which is a Tor.com very short fantasy novella following a young person who goes to search for water. There is no water in the city of Lies where they live, and so they go off on an epic journey. I believe that this one might be a little bit mythic or feel like a folk tale. And again, it's very short, but I have high hopes that it's going to pack a punch in just a few pages. And so this one is out in March, so I'll be reviewing it very soon. And next up is Bitter Medicine, which is a contemporary Chinese fantasy that involves an immortal god and a French elf that need to navigate romance and loyalty and workplace demands. It sounds like a really goofy story, but I understand that it's by a Taiwanese American author and so really brings a different perspective to an urban fantasy story. And I do tend to love things that have an Asian American perspective to them. So I hope I will love this one. I'm really excited for it. Again, romance isn't always my thing, but I'm really hoping that this one will work for me. It's so cute. Next up is Springs Arcana by Lilith St. Crow. And this is an urban fantasy that is compared to American Gods, which I still need to read, but I really think I'm going to love that one. And this one I actually don't know too much about. It follows a woman who is desperate to save a life. Doctors can only do so much for her cancer-ridden mother. And so she has to go off on her own. And I really love stories that have a setup where there's a character who is in a desperate situation because I think it creates good motivation that makes a very plausible and believable story. And I'm excited to see where this one goes. Again, it's one that I've kind of heard buzz about, but not quite. And so I'm eager to check it out for myself. And obviously, hopefully I will love it. And from Orbit, I'm very excited to receive review copies of The Way of Shadows, followed by Shadow's Edge. And finally, in the original trilogy, we have Beyond Shadows, all by Brent Weeks. This is a new release of the Night Angel trilogy. I've recently read and reviewed these books and love them. So I definitely recommend checking them out. These new covers are beautiful and definitely, I think, are a really good fit for the books. And then on top of that, I need to get to this, I have an early copy of Night Angel Nemesis, which is the newest book that's coming out in April. And this is just an arc of it, and I'm so eager to get into this one because again, I love the original trilogy so much. And at this time I haven't read anything. I don't want to know how this fits in. So I'm going to keep this all spoiler free, even for myself until I actually get to read and review it. But this again is coming out very soon. So I will be getting to it and it's really chunky. So I'm excited for it. I just want to spend more time with the characters in this world because I really loved it. It was just like the perfect combination of like action characters and 
everything I was looking for in a fantasy story. So highly recommend. I think this is a really good assassin fantasy and I'm so excited to have more to read in this series. And last I want to talk about a piece of fantasy that isn't actually fantasy but I'm going to put in this section because it's actually a piece of historical fiction but I think it will appeal to those of you that love books in the vein of the Dandelion Dynasty and She Became the Sun and all of these epic Chinese inspired fantasy series that we love so much. So again I think I've already discussed and reviewed this book on my channel but I want to once again talk about Yellow Sky Revolt by Baptiste Pinson Wu and this is the first book in the Three Kingdoms Chronicles which is a historical fiction that is based off of the romantic tale of the Three Kingdoms which is based off of actual Chinese events and history and I have already watched I believe it's a 2010 TV show which made me fall in love with the series and then I went on to read a translation of the three books and now I got a chance to read this adaptation, this story that's inspired by it, but it's very much its own work and it's so good. I love the characters, I love the world building. Again, if you love Asian inspired work, this is fantastic. Again, it doesn't necessarily have those fancy elements because it's not actually fantasy, but I feel like there is something about these stories that has like a romanticism to their nature that fits in very well with readers like myself that typically prefer something more epic and fantastical. It definitely does the epic part and the character work is just so good. The writing is beautiful. I cannot gush about this book enough and I don't remember if I said in my review but I actually got a signed copy from the author. I never get signed copies from authors, so I really appreciate this so much. There's another book coming out and I'm dying to read that, so highly recommend this book. If you love historical fiction, if you don't love historical fiction, either way, read this book because it is beautiful and it will make you fall in love with the Three Kingdoms story and then hopefully you'll go on to read the original text or translation and watch some of the adaptations because it's such a wonderful story and I'm so excited for more. So that's it for this video here. I think I'm going to cut it off even though I do have more books to talk about so it means I'm going to have to do another book haul this spring so stay tuned for that but in the meantime if you are interested in any of these books let me know which ones you'd like me to prioritize for review in the coming months because a lot of these are coming out very quickly and also if you're new to my channel I do read a lot of horror thriller science fiction fantasy and some true crime and if you want to stick around and subscribe I appreciate that if you want to give me a thumbs up you can drop a comment even if it's just an emoji like a stack of books and if you want to hit that little notification bell you'll never miss another video from me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.